everyone. Uh, my name is Uri, uh, and I'm here to talk with you about um, Azura and GraphQL Mesh uh, and all the new capabilities that now you can do with Azura's new remote joins and with GraphQL Mesh. Um, I'm a founder of a group called the Guild. Uh, we do a lot of open source in the community, uh, mostly around GraphQL. Um, some of the libraries you maybe heard about was our GraphQL code generator, where you can generate types for your backend and your frontend. Um, GraphQL inspector, where basically prevents breaking changes, and every time you go into production, you can make sure you're not um, your API is um, is valid. Um, GraphQL CLI, uh, you've probably heard about GraphQL modules if you want to work in separate teams and each team has their own responsibilities of the graph. Um, and also recently we took over a library, uh, the GraphQL Tools library, which is a very famous library that a lot of the people in the community are dependent about and it wasn't so well maintained. We took over it and we rebuilt it, we added tons of features into it and also rebuild schema stitching. So now schema stitching is way better than it was before. It's no longer deprecated. And if you looked at it before, you should really check it out again. And we have a lot of libraries that we built uh, for the community. And our idea was we want to start a new group that can basically create sustainable open source that you can count on for many years to come. Um, and you can use those libraries individually. Um, or you can just pull them together into one coherent platform. Um, but today I'm going to talk about how Hazura fits in into the whole picture. So Hazura, as we all know here, and I don't need to uh, explain, is an amazing, amazing tool. For me, the best thing about Hazura is that um, it, you can build super fast apps and you can build them super quickly but you can also do that in any environment. It's an open source solution that runs on existing databases. So um, what we see is that we suddenly see those types of apps being built inside enterprise companies, which is those are the companies that we mostly work with. We mostly work with large companies that they have a lot of existing code and a lot of existing infrastructure and suddenly seeing Applications like the applications that Azura helps you create in those companies is amazing to us. Now, what we see is that um, once you start with Azura, obviously you're going to experience success pretty quickly inside those organizations. And then when you have success inside those organizations, um, very quickly uh, people want to get to be part of it and very quickly you gather more and more features and you need to start inter integrating with other um, existing systems. Um, and that might be hard because those existing systems might, you know, um, might not be as flexible as Hazura is. And you know, one of the most powerful and exciting things that Azura is, uh, this is why we are so excited about uh, remote joins. Remote joins is just, is an amazing ability now because we can take this very fast pacing uh, application that we build with Azura and we can start integrating other sources into that system. Uh, and, and, and so I think that's a, an extremely powerful concept. Now the question is, how do we go about doing the transition? Um, so if we look at the Hazura as like our, um, the thing that communicates with our current app and our client, now we need to start integrating with other servers and maybe third-party APIs and things like that. Now, maybe we can start converting them. Now, the thing is with remote joins is that uh, Hazura expects a GraphQL API to be integrated into. So in order to integrate with other sources, uh, we might want to maybe um, like start converting all the sources that we want to uh, merge into GraphQL, or maybe you know if that's not possible, we want to build like small gateways in front of those services. Now, that sounds good, but in reality, a lot of those services won't migrate to GraphQL. Um, in reality, they have enough work as it is. They're not going to convert into learn and convert into a new protocol. Uh, maybe those are legacy services that nobody is touching them anymore. So this is 
in large organization, this is, you know, sometimes not the best practical way of doing that. So we, but we saw the success of Hazura and GraphQL inside of those organizations and we wanted it to continue. So we thought, well, maybe we can do something interesting because those services do have, are working. They do have schemas. Some of them have schemas. Let's say they have a gRPC or open API or Swagger schema, maybe SOAP schema. But some of them maybe just, even if they just rest without, a, they're using rest without any schema, there's just information there on the logs that we can, that we can extract and understand what's going on there. So what we thought is maybe we can use all that information, maybe a schema or data or whatever we have, and convert this information into a GraphQL schema. And maybe even take all those schemas and convert them into one GraphQL source, and then we can integrate it with Azura and with the remote joins. So that's GraphQL Mesh. <laughs> so um, GraphQL Mesh basically takes any source that you can give it and any information. It can be Open API, gRPC, maybe even queue systems, like uh, if you have an event system or M a RabbitMQ or whatever, it can integrate with those as well, or Kafka and then it generates a GraphQL executable, executable Gra GraphQL. And um, the sources can be any source. So, you know, open API and Swagger, gRPC, we have handlers for all those technologies. So um, OData, we, with OData, we actually took the whole Microsoft graph, um, which is an OData based and converted the whole graph into GraphQL. They had their own project trying to do it manually and couldn't succeed. Uh, and we did it in automatically. Now, once GraphQL Mesh gets that information and converts it, it can be run as a gateway um, or it can be run as a SDK on your existing services. So there's full flexibility of how you can run it and where you want to run it and how you want to use that, that graph. Um, for example, one person in the community took, basically, if you Google GraphQL Mesh Docker, he basically built a library where you can just input it, the swag, the, the YAML um, config file for Mesh, and then you just get a gateway running um, that exposed GraphQL. Um, and again, we built Mesh to be completely flexible, so you can, every step of the way is customizable, and you can do transformations on any step of the way. So that's why it's extremely flexible, flexible and can support so many uh, use cases. Um, now, the thing is, uh, one, uh, not only we understood like what this thing can happen, but actually the community. Um, and we started seeing people in the community actually taking GraphQL Mesh and then gen in order to... Um, and converting all the existing APIs that they had in their organization and then merging it with their existing Azure applications. Uh, so that's very, very powerful and that's what I want to show you right now. So I created a video, so you know, forgive me that I'm not live coding, but I'm gonna explain it a bit. So what you see here, this is an existing Azure database that has basically cities API, a cities information. So, you know, we can query a city and its name. Um, now let's go ahead and create our mesh applications. So we're just creating a deer um, and just yarn in it an application. I'm doing it from scratch here. There's nothing in that library. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install mesh. Um, and you'll see that everything I'm doing here, basically you could also have done with just a Docker. Now. What we want to integrate with is Brewery's, Brewery's API. So I wanted an example where we have an API that is out of our control and it doesn't have a schema. You can watch other talks of mine where I show how to, and there's also examples on the repo where we show how to just generate everything for mesh from schemas. But in many, many cases um, in real enterprise, um, they don't have schemas or the schemas are completely outdated or things like that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just take an example response and then as an example 
um, input and output basically of that API. And GraphQL Mesh will take that, um, take that uh, information, generate a JSON schema out of it, and then generate a GraphQL API out of it. So let's see how it goes. So I'm just going to paste this here. Uh, and I'm also going to paste an example, uh, um, the example input. Um, and again, you can do that just by looking at your logs or bringing whatever you want in. Um, and now let's create our actual mesh, mesh YAML file. So I can tell Mesh what are my sources. I can name them. In this case, we'll just write call it like Open Brewery or something like that. Um, and then let's look at the at the config. So um, we we have many different handlers. In that case, we 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 brought in the JSON schema handler. We told it where the base URL is, and then for the operations, we actually we just told it. And this, in order to get the schema, we, we basically just told it where to search for it. And again, so you can use just bring in your own logging information or whatever and generate that yourself from existing services. And now, just by doing that, um, let's just start Mesh. So let's create the, the script. Let's run yarn start, Mesh serve. And what you're going to see now is that I basically got a fully working GraphQL API. Now, I didn't write any code in here. You see I have all the docs as if it was a GraphQL service, but it's not. It's a, it's a regular REST service that didn't have a schema even. So now I can have the autocomplete and all the amazing experience. Even on the input, I have autocomplete on the parameters. And I can query for whatever I want. I get fully type safe interface. And you can see that it works. But again, this is from an old API that I have no control of. Now, once I did that, we can actually start now join that API into Hazura. So let's just go to remote joins and paste the URL of my new mesh instance. So now we can query um, not only the CD um, through the API, like we had before, um, we can also query the breweries. Um, but what we really want is we want to get the breweries inside the CD. So let's use the powerful remote joins in Azura for it. So now in CD, we can integrate, we can um, declare a relationship with the brewery and we're going to take it from the remote schema and we're going to you know use it the, by the input by a city like we saw before and now if we go back uh, what we can see is that now we can actually query the breweries in a city and again we are using here um, our own Hazura data together with an API that doesn't have any schema um, and we have no control of and is not GraphQL at all. So that's a very short example. This example, by the way, uh, exists uh, on our, GraphQ on, on our uh, GitHub repository. You can find it there together with other examples uh, and just go ahead and try it out. Now let's go back to the presentation. So now you saw how powerful this combination is with Hazura remote joins and GraphQL mesh. Now the thing is, uh, we can do, uh, we can take it a step further. We can start actually implementing uh, and exposing those modules, those mesh modules, um, into any API. Like on our website, we, like I said, we have the Microsoft API, we have Stripe, we have all kinds of APIs that are not GraphQL at all, but now you can just take them as GraphQL and you can get, create your own integrations and include those integrations uh, into Hazura. And we can start creating a lot of existing in integrations and uh, with any API you can think of and you can share those integrations inside your company or 
you know, with the with the whole wall and basically create a huge graph of all the sources we can think of. So I hope that was uh, interesting for you. Um, you can follow us. Um, you, you can go to the website graphicalmesh.com. Uh, you can follow us and our Twitter. Uh, and you can join our community. I think, you know, our community and the Hazura community were always very close and we are very close and we love everything Hazura does. And we want to come up with more things that we can help uh, everyone at Hazura. Uh, so thanks for having me and I hope to hear from you online. Thank you.